Hello and welcome to the seventh lesson of my series Salesforce for Beginners. In this video, we are going to learn about what are formula fields and what are validation rules. Now this is going to be a first part of a two-part series on business logic. If you want to go through my previous lessons, the links will be in the description. So let's get started. So let's go through the contents of business logic. We have formula fields and validation rules that we'll learn in this lesson and later in the next lesson, we're going to learn about workflows and approval processes. We already know what a regular field on an object is where we store the data, but let's now learn about what a formula field is. A formula field is a special type of field which uses the values present in other fields and using expressions to calculate its own value. A few key points to note here is a formula field can automatically calculate the value. You don't have to manually do the calculations. It can perform multiple operations like mathematical operations, logical operations, etc. The output value of a formula field after computation can be stored in multiple data types like checkboxes, numbers, etc. And last but not the least, a formula field is always a read-only field. So let's try to understand the workings of a formula field using an example. So let's take an example of a school where the exams have just ended and Miss Teacher now has to grade the papers of all the students. Miss Teacher is doing just that and just finished with grading Mike's papers, where Mike's received 40 out of 100 in maths, 50 out of 100 in science, and 60 out of 100 in English. Now the next step that Miss Teacher needs to do is add this data in Salesforce. So she's going to do just that by going to the object student and entering the value for the record Mike such that the marks on the maths field, which is of data type number, is 40. On science, it's 50. On an English, it's 60. Now the next task that Miss Teacher needs to do is add all the values for all subjects and get the total of all subjects. To do so, Miss Teacher is going to use a simple logic, which is total equals science plus English plus maths. This would give Miss Teacher a total of 150, which she can go and enter in a field called total of type number. While this process looks simple, this is not ideal when she has to enter values for multiple students, and hence this method is not recommended. Instead, a Salesforce administrator can configure a formula field of the type, formula, and output type number, and this formula would use the same logic that Miss Teacher used and generate a value of 150 automatically. So using this approach, Miss Teacher just has to enter the values of all subjects for each student and the system is going to automatically calculate the totals for all students. So now that we've gone through an example, let's get on to the hands-on scenarios where the first scenario is the one we've just seen, that is, create a formula field to total the marks obtained by a student on the student's object. To do so, log into your free Salesforce developer account. So I'm currently on my home page of my developer org. On the top right corner, click on Setup. I want to traverse to a custom object, so in the left quick find, I'm going to type Objects. Under Create, click on Object. Now here is a list of custom objects in my system. I'm going to click on student. This is going to take me to the custom object page of the object student. Now scroll down. We have the standard fields. Under custom fields and relationships, I want to create a new formula field. So I'll click on the button new. Now under data type, I'm going to select formula and click on next. I'll give it a name. I'm going to say this is marks total. When I click anywhere outside, I'm going to have the API name autofill and then I'm going to select number as my return type and click on next. Now we are on the step three, which is enter formula. If you scroll down, you're going to see there are two tabs. One is simple formula and the other is advanced formula. So let's work on a current scenario using a simple formula. To do so, in the text area, I'm going to place my cursor. I want to add the values of all the subjects. Currently in my system, I only have two subjects, which is maths and science. So in insert field, I'm going to select maths marks. Then I'm going to insert an operator using the insert operator button and click on add. This simply adds a plus sign to my editor. I can also choose to just type in plus and then carry on with my work. 
The next field I'm going to add here is the science marks. So the formula becomes maths marks plus science marks, which is equal to my total marks. I'm going to scroll down and then click on next. In the visibility section, I will give access to all the profiles. Click on next. Add to page layout. It's already on the student layout, so that is fine. Click on save. There, you've created your first formula field. This formula field is going to give me the total of maths and science marks combined. Let's click on marks total to review the formula. Scroll down. You can see that math marks plus science marks is the formula. Here, maths marks and science marks are API names of two different fields. Now let's go and see how this works. To do so, on the tab section, click on students. Now click on new to create a new record. In students name, give any name. I'm going to select Paul Rudd. In science marks, enter a value. I'm going to give 50 and maths marks as 60. Click on save. You're going to see that there is a field called marks total, which says that the value is 110, which is a sum of 50 and 60. That is how a formula field calculates the value automatically. A quick thing to notice here is that if you hover on science marks and maths marks, you can see that there is a pencil symbol. While if you hover on the marks total, it gives a lock. This is because this is just a read only field and you can't edit the value yourself. And also let's click on students tab again and visit a pre-existing record like Tony. You'll see that the values are already calculated for all the existing records as well, which is 99 plus 77, which is 176 for Tony. Now let's move to our second scenario, which is to create a formula field to calculate the total percent obtained by the students in all subjects. To do so, just like the previous scenario, I'm going to navigate to the custom object page of the object student. Scroll down. Click on new. Select formula. Click on next. Give the field label as total percent. This time I'm going to select the type as percent instead of number. You can select the decimal places. I'll leave it to two and click on next. In the enter formula step, this time let's create the formula using an advanced formula. So click on advanced formula, scroll down. Now to insert a field, click on insert field button. In a new pop-up, select the field you want. I need the marks total field and click on insert. I'm going to insert the divide operator and type a value 200. This is because the total marks obtainable is 200 for two subjects. Now here is a key observation. The output type is percent. So as the formula goes, if I multiply this by 100, this would be how we normally calculate the value in percent. But as the output is already percent, you can remove the multiplied by 100 and it would still give you the percent. But if the output type would have been number, we would have to type multiplied by 100 to get the correct answer. Now click on next, select all profiles, click on next, click on save. There we have the formula field ready and now let's go and check the value. Click on students tab, scroll down, select a pre-existing record. Let's go for Paul Rudd. You can now see the total percent field which says 55%. Now let's check the third scenario, which is create a formula field to evaluate if a student has passed the exam, if percent obtained by the student is greater than 50%. To do so, we navigate back to our custom object page for the student object. Scroll down, click on new under custom fields and relationships. Select formula, click on next, give it a field name. I'm going to call it result. Scroll down, select the type as text and click on next. I'm already on the advanced formula tab. So here under the functions, I'm going to select if. Salesforce will give you a preview of the syntax such that if has three parts. The first is a logical test, value if true and value if false. I'm going to click on insert select function. So now I have a skeleton of the entire if condition. I'm going to select logical test and click on insert field. I want to perform the evaluation on the percent field. So I'm going to select total percent and click on insert. Now that I have the field total percent, I want to evaluate 
if total percent is greater than 50 percent to do so i'm going to write greater than and then usually we would write 50 but in our case because total percent is a formula field already we are going to type 0 0.50 so now the condition becomes if total percent is greater than 50 percent the value if true is going to be passed so i'm going to type passed and value if fail is going to be failed so i type failed now click on next click on visible click on next again now click on save there we've created the result formula field now let's go and check the value on a student's record so click on student tab click on paul rudd you can see that the result says passed when the value of total percent is 55 percent now let's edit the record and change the value for the science marks i'm going to make it 10 and click on save you see that the total percent now is 35 percent and the result is failed now let's get on to the next part which is validation rules a validation rule verifies the data that a user has entered before the user can save the record it basically ensures that the user does not input wrong data a validation rule basically has two parts the first is a formula or an expression as you can see the blue box and next is an error message as seen on the red box the flow of a validation rule goes something like this when a user enters data and clicks on the save record button it would evaluate a formula or an expression and if the output of this is true we will display an error message or if it's false it's going to save the record now let's try to understand this using an example mr professor was entering data in some of the student records when accidentally he has entered the value for maths as 150 out of 100 which is an invalid score now assuming that there is no validation rule in place the record gets saved successfully which means that maths will now have a value which is invalid which is a wrong way of adding data now let's take the same situation where mr professor has added the value 150 but now instead we have a validation rule in place so let's play out the same situation with a validation rule when mr professor clicks on save there will be a validation rule evaluation saying that if maths value is greater than 100 which in our case if 150 is greater than 100 which is true it would display an error message now let's say after seeing this error message mr professor realizes that he needs to change the marks on maths field so he enters a value of 99 we know that the validation rule will fire again and running the scenario again when mr professor is going to click on the save record button it's going to evaluate if 99 is greater than 100 which is false and as a result the record is going to get saved which is the right scenario so now that we have a bit of idea on what a validation rule is let's get on with the hands-on scenario so the scenario is if marks entered for mathematics is more than 100 for any student the system must throw an error now this example is the one which we've just gone through so let's get right to it log into your free salesforce developer account i'm currently on the home page of my developer account on the top right corner click on setup in quick find type objects under create click on objects again i'm going to select the student object on the custom object student page scroll down under validation rule i'm going to click on new for the rule name i'm going to type math marks not greater than 100 I'm going to make active as false and scroll down. In the formula editor, click insert field. Select maths marks and click on insert. Now to check if it's greater than 100, we're going to type greater than and then type 100. You can quickly check if the syntax is correct by clicking the check syntax button. You can do check syntax also on the formula fields that we've created earlier. Now, if maths marks is greater than 100, we want to display an error message. So let's type an error message. I'm going to type maths marks should be 
less than 100. Now let's select an error location. It's by default top of page, but let's select field. And select the field as math marks. Click on save. There, we've created our first validation rule. Now you may realize that we've checked active as false. This means that the validation rule is not active and hence will not fire when we save the record. Let's go and check the behavior of a record. So let's go to the student record. On the students tab, let's open Paul Rudd. We currently have maths marks as 60. Click on edit. Change the maths marks to let's say 150 and click on save. You'll see that the record has saved without any issue. That is because that we've not activated the validation rule. So let's go back to the object page and activate the validation rule. Click on setup. In quick find type objects. Under create, click on object. Select student. Now scroll down. In validation rule, we're going to click on math marks not greater than 100. You'll see that I also have another validation rule, but that's because I've created that offline. So click on math marks not greater than 100. You see that the active is unchecked. We're going to check that. Click on edit. For active checkbox, check the checkbox and click on save. There, the validation rule is now active. To test it out, let's go back to the students tab. We're going to go back to the Paul Rudd record. Click on edit. Let's just change the value to let's say 151 this time. Click on save. You see that it throws an error and it says that math marks should be less than 100. So we're going to change this value to 90 and click on save. There, the record is saved successfully. Let's try this again. Click on edit. You see we also have science marks and earlier I had told you about the validation rule that I created offline. So it's the same validation rule that we created for maths but just on the science field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type 500 and try to save this record. You see that now again there is an error message but this time the error message is on the top of the page because the location was set to top of page for science marks. Hence the error message can be seen on top of the page. I'm going to change this again and type 67 and click on save. There, the record is successfully saved. So that's it for today's video. If you like the video, press on that like button, comment and share the video and subscribe to my channel Begin IT. Also like us on Facebook and visit our blog on WordPress. So this is Devjit Chaudhary and I'll see you next time.